You make it look so easy. Yes, I'm just using very basic fundamentals. Listen, cancel all your plans. Today, you will learn jungle for free. How, how it's gonna go is that I'm gonna do full educational content. Simply so, so you guys can learn jungle better, that you guys can apply everything I say for your games. Very, very simple. I don't know what's about to happen here. Q. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna so, just attack him. The chance I die is zero, so I'm just gonna continue attacking him. That's absolutely fine staying here. I will get my Q back up. I will, I will also get this last auto attack off. I will Q him now. So, first of all, when he dies, I will end up being in a position where I started my Q. And also, if Bard walks into tower range the moment I Q, he will take tower aggro. So, again, the chance I die is very, very low. Here in this position, there are three options you have. You can buy a dagger, you can buy a longsword, and you can also buy boots. I personally think everything is okay. Longsword is most of the times the best because with longsword you are able to fight the enemy jungler after scuttle or with scuttle more. Um, I personally just am uh, also really love having boots because it just helps me to use opportunities. So in games, for example here, where I have Bard, where I have Leona, using opportunities is better than having instant damage and also keep in mind the longsword will help your clear but it will not immensely help your clear. The, w the thing which helps to clear the most is, for example, here having, I will show my runes here in this position, is having Eyeball Collection. Eyeball Collection, also I got a little bit of Treasure Hunter, and of course having a Control Word here is also very, very useful. Why do I buy a Control Word early on? Because that helps me putting the Control Word in a position where it's most likely not gonna get cleared, for example, in this bush, and then it's gonna stay there. Even though I'm not gonna track anything, I'm always tracking that there is basically nothing. Keep that in mind. If your control word never tracks anything, it tracks that there is nothing. And that's also good information. I will just do it here for you to show. Um, usually I would wait a little bit because I place my control words more aggressive. But you will see that this control word is very valuable. I know that Nocturne is not invading my chickens. I know that Nocturne is not cheesing mid lane gang, for example. Oh, I cancel one auto attack here. I'm still not 100% used to the low ping. Here I give you another tip. You should start always the queue at uh, two points in the queue if you can. Most of the times, the problem about putting two points in queue is that if Nocturne was invading me now, the chance I die is very high because I simply have no HP reg regeneration. I'm gonna take this little plant here because Pike is awarding. Okay, that would pressure him a tiny bit. But since we knew that Nocturne was invading, like, pathing to top, the chance he invades me is extremely low. Okay, Bard is coming. I'm gonna try to make a play happening with Bard. Let's see what, he, what he's about to do. Probably just gonna E over the wall here. So I'm just gonna W in this position. Wait until he's here as well. He's gonna E. I'm gonna take the portal with them. I'm not gonna Q yet. I'm not gonna Q yet. I'm gonna Q the Lucian now because he's isolated. The chance I kill him is extremely high. He will die 100%. I still have Flash. Now I will start attacking the, the, the minions, even though Pike is being chased, because the chance we kill Pike is extremely low. He can just E over the wall anytime he wanted to. Um, I wanted to push out the wave, but it was obviously too late now. I, sh I uh, should not have attacked the wave afterwards. I'm gonna help my Aniva here as well. I have no problem in finishing this one. Now I wait for my cooldown, so I'm just gonna wait in the base. I'm gonna start attacking the Nocturne here. I'm not gonna use my Q. I'm not gonna use my Q. I wait for my Q. I wait for my Q. Now I Q the... Akali, I'm gonna flash the pike in the bush right here. Okay, that's pretty bad that they are... They can't kill me, I will just press W here in this position. The chance he kills me is exactly, precisely zero, because there's nothing he can do more than his burst, and my W will always outheal. Akali flashed away and either way as well, but that's absolutely wonderful. And now for the build path, what is for sure the best is always um, go Blade of Rune King, no matter what. I think Blade of Rune King first is in, right now, 90% of the games the best. I have tested now a lot. A lot of days, a lot of games were tested and it is the best. Alright, so bot lane seems pretty fine. Bard continuously roam. That's a strategy um, which means that he's gonna give up his top lane and then be with his team the entire time, which means he will hard lose top lane, which means that uh, Fiora will have way more CS. But on the other hand, our mid lane and our bot lane will win. So what this strategy is all about is that he wants to do dragon and then spam dragons and with the dragons within time outscale the enemies even if it costs us losing the top tower here. We see Fiora is making a huge mistake. She's trying to counter the um, 
She's trying to either counter the Bard strategy by roaming herself, or she plays very slowly in the wave, which is also a mistake. What Fiora should be doing, what you should be doing if you ever have a Bard like this or like any other support like this in your games, what you should be doing um, is hardcore push, permanently hard push, because then she gets one, two, maybe three platings, and with that she um, is a way bigger threat than she actually applies pressure. If she just waits and tries to deny Bard CS by freezing, if she just waits to get herself a lead, that's all useless. What she needs to do is, is applying instantly pressure. Now she does it correctly, she's pushing, and as you can see, Bard cannot roam anymore. He instantly goes to top lane. Alright, now I'm gonna take the Scuttle here. Now I'm gonna take the Scuttle here, and considering a bot lane play, whenever you have older Master Yi, you want to make a bot lane play work. Why is that? Because with your old, if you get resets on Lucian, then the next champion for example pike here in this position will for sure die as well so I'm, all i'm gonna do is hover bot lane now a fight is gonna break out i'm on my way pike has no e so i'm gonna engage on pike it's very simple very simple i'm not gonna kill lucian now i have my reset and as i said getting both kills is extremely easy because i already got the resets on pike i can walk in aggressive we see fiora on the map we see those two so only noxion and uh, akali can be here Right now I hovered my bot in a little bit, they need to be careful because they could come from here. I'm gonna reset, I don't have the best possible bag for Blade of Room King, but still resetting here is the best. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go Crux, Wrap of Chickens, we can give top lane, that's completely fine. Okay, I don't have ult, I don't have Blade of Room King, so I cannot kill the Fiora. Even though I'm most likely stronger than the Fiora, the chance I die on that play is very high and as well, the chance that I kill her is if she plays it correctly zero, because I don't have ult, I don't have flash. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna avoid her. Can we look on the minimap here? Nocturne used his Q, so he has to be mid lane. We can even put, um, argue about pinging that if we wanted to. All right, I'm going trying to go mid lane. Nothing is about to happen. We see two people on the map. We see three people on the map. All right, I can try to, for example, face check Nocturne here, as we I will show you. He will E me now, but that's already too late because my Q bounce will kill him. 100% you see my control that I placed at the beginning is still standing actively what I usually would have done I need to be careful now Fiora is about to come and right into my position I'm gonna stay in this bush she to piece bot lane so I'm gonna go for Herald right now we also know Nocturne does not have ult so we are in an amazing position all right so what I wanted to say is that my control would stay there now the entire game why is that so good because it the entire time it gave vision that there's no enemy and what I usually do is place the first control word very aggressively. For example, in this bush, in that bush, or maybe in a, in a pixel bush, whatever it is. And then place the second control word more defensively. Alright, so what I'm gonna do now is, I have ult and 30, I have flash, so I want to make sure I get a player, I want to make sure I get a tower, platings, uh, they already got first blood tower. So what will be the smartest? Guys, what do you think? What would be the smartest? Which lane should I play for with Herald? What do you think? You make it look so easy. Yes, I'm just using very basic fundamentals. And I will do a fundamentals jungle guide for you guys um, before I go to Korea. So while Co Korea, you can just watch it and learn. Okay, so I'm gonna explain it. In general, this is a general fact. The best is always mid lane. If you get mid lane, it's by far the best because you will enable all this room for yourself and you have everything under control. If you cannot get mid lane, the second best is bot lane. And the worst is top lane tower. Bot lane tower still gives you a lot of pressure. Here in this position, I don't even need to use my herald because I will get the tower before herald. Tower platings despawn minute 14. So that means I have three and a half more minutes. So if I can make a mid lane play, I will use a mid lane. If I can make a top lane, if I don't make a mid lane play, I will just force a top lane. The reason why I'm engaging here, I'm gonna explain it in a second. As you can see, the enemies can't do anything. I knew that even if Pike is there, the chance I kill Pike is precisely... Uh, the chance that I kill Lucian is... Around 100%. He has no disengage option. Even if Nocturne ults, even if Pike immediately presses Q, the chance that this Lucian dies is equals 100%. And the moment I see personages like this, as you can see, I instantly use it. I don't hesitate a second. 
And it's your job to find it as well. Okay, Fiora pushed very hard. Now I'm going to show you what do you do if Fiora's that aggressive. Now we are able to 1v1 her, finally. We don't have ult, we don't have flash, so we just see what's about to happen. We're going to make sure we get the crux. If Fiora isn't pushing further, she most likely cannot push further. So what we are going to do now is we try to catch her, to get her, um, her Hydra stacks back. We also catch her to shut her down. Just don't, basically don't let her push even further because that would be a problem. Okay, so platings, now I need to focus a little bit. I need to focus a little bit. Platings will be despawning. What I want to do, we ignore this dragon. I'm gonna explain in a second why. Um, plates will be despawned in two minutes. I was not focusing too much right now, but you what you should be doing, what you should be doing is focusing on top tower. This top tower with four, five platings is more important. I'm gonna wait for the minions here, that's fine. Um, I missed that anyways, I'm just gonna take the next. Um, what is more important is these five plates because it gives you an insane amount of gold with which you can carry. This dragon right now is useless. Why is the dragon useless? Let's see if he goes on me. Why is the dragon useless? Because that's not our win condition. I have eight and zero kills, which means I need to finish the uh, game very, very fast. I don't need to get all the drakes in order to outscale the enemies. I just need to finish the game ASAP. So most e players make the massive mistake of taking the drake now, which is useless. You see the bard even doesn't want it because the strategy means that you should avoid top lane permanently. But going top lane here is the only right call. I'm gonna not attack the minions, because the tower would get more armor then. Okay, now we get the tower. And you see I'm extremely fat in gold now. You will see that if the more I scale, the worse it will be in terms of at one point I will be outscaled. We see three people on the map, we see five people on the map. That means we can easily dive the Lucian uh, if we wanted to. Just make a psychological trick here. I'm walking away, then I'm walking back. So he would walk further. I'm gonna press smite. I'm not gonna Q. Now I'm gonna Q. As you can see, it's an absolute easy kill. There's absolutely zero he can do. Now I'm gonna go for Grump. Leona gives me pressure. Meanwhile. Oh! Never mind, I didn't see that one coming. We're just gonna give her. I didn't expect the Akali since she was zoning. I'm just gonna reset. All right, now I'm gonna buy Rageblade. Let's see how much gold we're gonna have. And I'm gonna buy Noonkeeper. And now I'm in an absolute amazing position. I'm very fat now, and now I need to end the game ASAP. So what will I do? Crux, wrap of chickens. I'm gonna look for a catch, and then I'm gonna go Herod. That simple. Okay, now she makes a mistake. She's over pushing. I don't have ult, so I need to be careful in how I play it. I'm gonna walk up to her because I will get my E back up soon. And I'm gonna just start attacking her. I'm not gonna use my Q yet. I'm not gonna use my Q yet. I have E activated now and she will just die. There's absolutely zero the viewer can do. I'm gonna go for wrap buff and chickens and then, uh, as I said, I want to play for Herald. And with the Herald, I want to end the game. And maybe one, a few of you guys will ask, but how can you end the game? It's Completely normal in the game, yeah, because I'm completely over extremely fat, because I went for the right calls with the Herods, uh, with the top lane platings. I'm just gonna walk mid lane, see what happens, I don't have any vision yet. They're about to win this. Okay, and now you see this situation, guys, you see this exact situation. And now tell me in the chat, yes or no, was the dragon here we cancelled to get top towers important? Was it important? Most E players would have been like, yeah, we are strong. I'm gonna go for the Herald. Uh, go for the, for the um, Drake. Then I would have missed an insane amount of gold. Okay, I'm gonna take the next wave and then I'm just gonna reset or wait until I have Kraken. We see three people on the map, so I can walk up aggressively right now. A chance I die is zero. Okay, we see three people on the map still. We see three people on the map. So the only one, now we see four people on the map. The only one here could be Nocturne right now. Nocturne we see now also on the map. I'm gonna cut off the Akali here in this position. I'm gonna dodge her Q whenever she wants so I'm gonna walk away so I can go back and Q her. There's nothing she can do. She can't fight me a tiny bit. She has zero chance. I'm just gonna dodge this, get her W. If, if Lucian gets close, I will just one-shot him. There's no, also nothing Lucian can do. All right, I made a mistake here that I let the Windian wave go through. She has no W, so I can just do this to her if I wanted to. Absolutely zero that Akali can do. You hard count Akali if you do play correctly. Um, all right, so as you can see, we need to play around just our strengths and avoid our weakness. For example, Akali is extremely strong. Oh. I got feared here. That's why I died. Made a mistake here. I was over pushing. I didn't see Nocturne. I didn't see Fiora on the map. 
I was overestimating myself. If Nocturne eats me, I will just die with nothing I can do. So the mistake I made here is that I was underestimating and trying to explain it to you. But what happened with the Akali in this position, you can never engage Akali ever. She has W, she, she hard counters Master E. But the moment she does one mistake, it's your job to find that, see it, and be like, the chance we kill Akali now, when I flash on her, is precisely 100%. The chance you die is zero. The chance I, you die increases afterwards if the enemies play correctly. If this Nocturne, for example, pressed E one second la early, uh, later, he would have not killed me. Alright, I'm just trying to walk up here. Just gonna play slow, the chance I die is zero. I'm just gonna continue walking here, Pike will most likely Q. I'm just gonna ult here. We see all of the enemies on the map, so the chance I kill him is precisely 100%. We're just gonna look out for Pike here, I'm not kill him, but maybe he plays a little bit too greedy. Here, my team doesn't need me for Dragon. What I should be doing is taking the wave here, and then instantly taking the Crux into the next wave. And I'm also gonna look out for a Pike mistake. I'm five levels ahead of him, so if he walks up a tiny bit to me, he will die. Someone needs to defend Fiora as well. I'm gonna take the wave here. Alright. GG. Alright, the enemy surrendered. Wonderful! Mm -mm 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 -mm. 